just trying to keep our mind off of that. Uh, pray for those that are sick and afflicted and uh, quarantining that God's will will be done in, in each heart and life. Let me make these announcements right quickly. Uh, thank you for being for, at Sunday school. Thank you for, I'm glad we got a church that still has Sunday school. Amen. Amen. Thankful for that and encourage you to come. Also, I want to say I appreciate uh, Chris and Evan, and Allison, and Nikki and Natalie yesterday morning uh, for the uh, uh, for the bus ministry. I asked for new help and get the least show up. <laughs> Amen. So uh, I, I want to encourage. We need new help. Need new help uh, on uh, on this bus ministry. Amen. Somebody said that sounded a little harsh. The truth will set you free. Amen. Amen. And. Uh, we want to encourage you. You say, well, it didn't get done. Oh, yeah, it got done. Thank the Lord for that. And uh, uh, on the YouTube, we need the thumbnails finished. We need, uh, we need the, the rest of downloaded that we can on the YouTube. We're ready to get, keep updated. And if you need help on that, I need you to tell me. Amen. It's been about two months now, and we need that done if we can. Facebook page. Uh, it's okay to have just the live streaming on the Facebook page on the going home, uh, and that's good. But we need more interaction there, amen, for, mem for members and people to feel like, well, I'd like to go back and see what they've said this week or see, what, see what's happening this week. All God's people say it. Need the photo cover changed on it, the cover photo changed on it. We just need to, uh, you to step up there. Tonight's service was going to be at the Nebo Baptist Church, but... That's been postponed. We'll be right here. Uh, we'll be right here at Going Home Church in the evening service. Um, and if you made plans to do something else rather than church, you just got your bubble busted. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I tell you what, when we when we transfer service, you don't uh, you don't lay out a church. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, uh, and then August the fifth, this coming uh, week, of course, uh, I'll announce Trinity Hills revival. They'll be in revival uh, all week, uh, this coming week, so you're encouraged to go and be a part of that. Uh, but August the 5th, that's this coming Friday, be church cleanup, uh, 6 o'clock, need all the help we can get there. August the 6th, uh, that's this summit coming Saturday, we'll be having the Foothills Association meeting. If you're a member of this church, you're a standing delegate in that Foothills Association. Some people will say, why? Well, I've never been involved. I want to encourage you to get involved. You'll get a blessing. There's always good preaching, good fellowship. Be at the Herrick Memorial Church. If we leave at 8.30, would that give us time? 9.45 is service time. So we're going to leave the church here Saturday morning at 8.30, all right? Uh, so please go. Uh, August the 24th, uh, we'll be moving our service to the Homer's Chapel, Free Will Baptist Church in Black Mountain. The choir will be singing. Um, so looking forward to a great time in the Lord there. The evangelism team, your month's over today. Amen. I think we had, uh, we had two out of six achieve uh, their goal. Uh, well, achieve, uh, had, had, in other words, you uh, achieved the goal. We had one, uh, amen, that, uh, that worked on their goal, got about 80% of their goal, and then... Uh, we had one that done 204% above what their goal was, and then we had one done 100%, and then we had one done 80%, amen, but there was only uh, three out of the six, amen, so I want to encourage you, set your goals higher, and uh, let's get those, uh, just go, uh, hey, just go praying and telling somebody just by a door hanger that Jesus loves them, okay? All God's people said? All right. And then uh, I, we got, we like one more banner. I want to say I appreciate those that's put up the banners. I like one more banner. It's on the uh, floor back here next to the sound room. Please do that. And I want you to pray and fast, amen, this week uh, for camp meeting. How did we do that? I want a 24-hour, uh, how did I do that the last time? I want a 24-hour prayer line uh, going up for camp meeting, amen. We signed up an hour at a time. Do we, do we, did we have a particular day on that? We can't do it on a Saturday or people won't be here on Sunday morning that prays at 5 o'clock or 3 o'clock of the morning. Amen. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a, a list uh, for, for tonight. 
uh, and I'd like, it'll be, I'll choose which day, uh, but I need uh, every hour for 24 hours uh, going up in prayer. And I'd like to encourage you to fast as the Lord leads you for this revival. We do have flyers on the table. I need about 30 more of those, sister. If, uh, I mean, we got some now, but if you get all those, that'll be good. We'll have more by tonight, but I need some for my personal self, all right? Okay, any other announcements? Did everybody hear this announcement? We're going to be making how many care baskets? Two care baskets, two, two care baskets and two are diabetic. They'll be given to one's to my mother and the other one's to Dora that's had surgery. Uh, so if you've got any questions, you can see Miss Helen, and that's what we'll be taking up tonight if you can get those things to help there. I'll go ahead. Sure, sure. Hallelujah. Appreciate that. And also, uh, I'd like for somebody to volunteer to help me get up two baskets for the singers. I normally have baskets for uh, the preachers that are coming in, but we're not having anybody stay. But we've got uh, the Parsons family and the Joy Ayers will be staying. Uh, they've already booked at Tom Johnson's Camping Center, but they'll be with us the whole week. All right, morning and evening services. And I need two baskets for each family. Uh, when I say that, uh, I'm talking about something they can snack on during the week. Uh, some, maybe you have something uh, the Lord blessed you with you want to uh, put in that basket, but I need some volunteers to help me get two baskets done for them. I tell you, we can't, you can't outgive God, and you can't uh, listen. God will bless us for blessing God's people. All God's people say it? All right, we can, try to, we can try to get that. Remind me. All right, let's stand our feet. Let's have the ushers to come around. We'll take up our morning tithes and offerings. My sugar high or is it hot? It's hot. Okay, sugar's hot. Some of them says it's hot. All right. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, bless the offering today. Thank you, God, for grace and mercy. We ask God now that you'd move in this service. Bless the gift and the giver, Lord, that gives today. And Lord, if there's any lost, save them, backslid, and reclaim them. And oh, God, I pray, send us revival. Wilt thou not revive us again? All God's people say it. After offering plate past you, let's fellowship.
choir need to fill the choir up. Everybody that'll sing.
Appreciate the singing this morning. Amen. Let me have your Bibles. We'll get right into the Word of God. Amen. Let's lift them up for the Lord. Give God a good wave offering with the Holy Scripture. Embarrass your pleasure. Appreciate uh, all the musicians this morning. I desire your prayers. Amen. That God uh, just bless this service. Amen. That help me. Amen. Get through. Amen. What God's laid upon our good see Miss Teresa. Amen. Uh, just continue lifting her up to the Lord and all those that's uh, sick. God knows who they are. Continue praying for Brother Norman. Uh, amen. And let's remember each other. All right. Mark chapter number two. Mark ch chapter two. Very familiar scripture. You've heard me deal with it before, but God's directed our hearts back this way. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we ask God that you'd bless us now. Lord, I pray that you touch the reading of thy word. We know, God, that it is blessed. We know, dear God, your word will not return void. I ask you to help me this morning. God, touch God the congregation. <coughs> Lord, encourage the discouraged, strengthen the weak, save the lost, and reclaim that when it's backslidden. God, that when it's in a rebellious state this morning, I pray in Christ's name that, uh, Lord, that they would turn it over to thee. And God, that bring it to this old-fashioned altar. And Lord, like the psalmist David said, will thou not revive us again? God, I need you. Lord, encourage your people. And all God's people said. Amen. Chapter 2, verse 1. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And, straight, and straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word of God, or excuse me, the word unto them. And they come unto him bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed, and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of God, excuse me, the Son of Man, hath power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thy house, thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. You may be seated. Just by the way of introduction, amen, this morning, I'll say before I get started, my heart as a pastor is burdened. Uh, and I don't expect you to have a pastor's heart because you're not a pastor. You going to pray for me today? Amen. Thank you for being in the Lord's house. But this morning, or this, well actually this week, I've seen some things. They ought to be power in the Lord's house. Amen. And I thank God that we got power here. Amen. But I can see, although that we've experienced some good services and I've, I, the Lord moving in our services, uh, God still showed us where we need revival. 
And if I didn't have a burden for you, then I need to step down from this pastorate position and let somebody else that's got a burden come on. But I've not lost that burden. And I've been asking you to pray for revival. And I believe, amen, and I'll have to say, woes is me. I'll have to say, God, help me. I mean, my mind's on revival. I'm helping. I'm the one that has to, uh, amen, get it together when I say that. God directs me. God leads me. Uh, but just by introduction, the, the upcoming revival in this camp meeting, we, I, I call it a camp meeting, but it's actually a revival. And this upcoming revival and the results or the conclusion of it doesn't lay in the lap of your pastor. Now, we may have been led of God to get the men to come preach and the singers to come sing, but it doesn't lay in the lap of your pastor. It doesn't lay in the lap of these preachers that are coming. Preacher, these is the man of God. Yeah, but they don't lay. Revival doesn't lay in my lap. It doesn't lay in their lap. These singers that are coming, amen, that's traveling distance to get here, it don't lay in their lap. But the results of, the, of this revival lies in the responsibility of this church. Now somebody's going to stop and say, oh, but I thought it was up to God. It is up to God, but it, the responsibility lies in your hands. What happens in this revival? I remember me preaching a message on uh, when, I, when I handcuffed myself together and I tied my hands. How many remember that message? You remember that sermon? In other words, there was somewhere, amen, there was a place, amen, in Jesus' ministry that he could not do, hey, no mighty work, the Bible said, because why? It was because of their unbelief. But sometimes we tie God's hands. I'm going to say it again. Amen, it don't lie in my lap, the singers, the preachers. Amen, revival is your responsibility of this church and its membership. This church can determine whether this revival, amen, will be a success or it's going to determine whether it dissipates out, amen, it fizzles out. Hey, just because we're having 12 services of, hey, of, of, of meeting, amen, doesn't mean we have 12 services of revival. Some of you didn't realize that, did you? We got 12 services coming up in a row. Amen. We've got three services. That, uh, amen. When I say services, I I I, I mean I, been through the preaching and everything. All God's people say it. Or it can or it can break out. Amen. With the power of God and revival fall. You and I can be instrumental in the turnout. You listen to me in the turnout of this revival. You can be instrumental of the turnout of this revival. And it's not just revival, amen, in the ministry altogether. It's the people of God that determines which way a revival goes. You say, I thought that's up to God. It is. Amen, but it depends on you how it goes. And if God will show up. How many is with the preacher? <laughs> I mean, listen. Uh, it, 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 it's the people of God that determine that. By God's help, I'm going to show you this morning, amen, uh, what can promote a revival. You say, well, why are you preaching this? It's, it's just not next week. No, but you're going to one, I hope, at Trinity Hill this week. <laughs> but I, this is the last time I'm going to get to preach. Besides tonight, in revival, amen, or, or actually at this church. He said, what's happening Wednesday night, amen? If we're not here, we'll be at Trinity Hill. I'll talk to the deacons about that. All God people say it? Amen. What can bring, and then what can hinder a revival? What can bring a revival? In verse number 1, the Bible says, And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and, and it was noise that he was in the house. I want you to notice, amen, you have to have 
the Lord. Amen. It was noise that he, amen, who's he? His name is Jesus. Amen. If you have to, hey, if you want revival and you want God here, we're going to have to have the one that can bring us, amen, revival. Listen, the presence of God has to be here. The presence of God is real. How many knows the presence of God? I'm talking about when God shows up, there won't be no pumping up. There won't be no priming up. Somebody help me here. Amen, I've seen preachers get up and they'll try to pump it up. They'll try to prime it up. Let me tell you something. Amen, listen, if God don't show up, it'll be of to no avail. Some of us in here know what old time revival days are. Some of us know, amen, what preaching is. Some of us know how the, they know the presence of God. But some of you in here has never experienced an old fashioned revival. Can I get help? I want him more than anything, amen, this week of revival, amen, this week of camp meeting. Hey, I want him more than anything in my life and in the life of this church. His presence is to be respected, how God's people say it. If you want him to show up, it's got to be respected. Amen. Amen. You've got to respect him. Listen, I believe they were thankful. I believe they were humble. Amen. When Jesus come by, the Bible says it was noised abroad. Amen. And by the way, they went into the house and there were so many, there wasn't even, hey, there wasn't even room enough to receive the people. Everybody couldn't get in. I mean, man, I've been told years ago of how churches, amen, that were so packed full. Hey, man, you know what? That's what I'd like to see it going home, amen, in this camp meeting. It's so packed full that they didn't have to leave. Hey, man, but we had to open up the doors for them to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I wouldn't care if it got so great we'd have to bust the window out. Preacher, you don't know what them windows cost. Yeah, and you're the one that exactly ain't going to get revival because you're worried about a stinking stained glass window. All God people said, amen, I think I want revival. Amen. They sure didn't care about the roof getting tore up that day. (laughs) They're just getting people to Jesus. Hallelujah. His presence is to be respected. Amen. I believe they were thankful and they were humble that that Jesus had passed by their way unto the Lord. Amen. People just get excited when Jesus would move through. Amen. I wonder if you knew. I wonder if you knew if he moved through this morning. Amen. And he passed by this morning. Would you really know he did, or or would it be an afterthought? I mean, he's with the preacher. I'm talking about, hey, don't get used, amen, to God showing up. Because when you get used to him showing up, it'll become, hey, he'll become complacent to you. That's the way old Uzzah was. You remember over there, the the, the guy named Uzzah, amen, that was, they they were directed not to touch the ark, amen, not to, I mean, not to touch it because the day you touch it, you die, amen. And do you remember how they put it on a new cart, put a new cart, put it on them oxen, and and them oxen, something happened, they stumbled, that ark started to uh, to roll over, and Uzzah just reached up out of concern, out of sincerity. I believe that with all my heart, out of sincerity, amen. He, He was just trying to help a bad, situation and that ark tilted amen like it's going to fall over amen and us have reached up and touched it now what would have been wrong with that I'll tell you what's wrong with it God said don't touch it <laughs> you say oh but it fell over no hey God hey things may look different hey things look different amen that they, they do to us than they do to God did you hear me God said means what he says. Don't get used to him showing up. It'll become complacent. We need to be grateful and humbled by his presence. Amen. How many feels the presence of the Lord this morning? Anybody felt the presence of the Lord? You ought to thank God. Every church you go in don't have the presence of Almighty God. Listen, if you're going to have revival, amen, Boy, and you want it to break out, and you want revival, amen, this week, amen, this well, week after next, amen, you have to respond to the presence of the Lord. You have to respond to it. That's the, that's the, that's the hardest thing to get people to do, 
Hey, I, I preach about old time services. I preach about being filled with the Spirit. I, be, I preach about God's presence and feeling His presence and be yielded to His presence. And when you feel His presence, you sit down like a knot on a log. See, here's what happens normally in camp meetings. You'll shout down the preachers that week. You'll shout down the singers that week. I'll be excited and pumped up and on Sunday morning you sit there. I'll get up to preach, amen, and you'll sit there. You think I'm crazy, don't you? I know what I'm talking about. Brother Joy, you ever been there? Hey, man, and you'll sit there. And I understand, hey, man. A prophet's not without honor saving his own country, the Bible says. What are you saying? I'm saying I want revival. Amen. This week his presence is going to have to be respected. We come to God's house. Let's respect God. Let's be thankful. Let's be humble. Have that God shows up. And when he shows up, amen, we're going to have to respond. Amen. When he, when he shows up. Amen. We're going to have to respond when he shows up. Now, I'm not talking about uh, amen testify just because you feel like it. I'm talking about let God stand you up. But here's the problem. God wants to stand you up and you quench the spirit of the Lord. You have to respond. You've got to yield. You've got to obey. You respond to his presence. Get right. Hey, there might be somebody that needs to get right with somebody this week. Hey, man, that's what revival's about. You getting right. Hey, man, with the person, hey, man, that you're crossed with. Hey, man. Oh, God, people said, sure enough. Hey, man, some of you got family trouble. Hey, why don't you get that family trouble worked up this week? Hey, man. And let's get ready for revival. Some of you ain't spoke to your family, amen, in years, amen. Well, it ain't my fault, amen, but you ain't doing nothing to better it. Wow. You still love your preacher? But the problems, amen, is when, when he does show up, some won't even respond to what he's telling you to do. Some of you wish this service was over right now. You wished it was over. You wished I'd shut up. You wish I'd just go on and dismiss the service. I know what some of you think. I know how the devil works. You're the very one that needs this sermon. All God's people say it? Sure. I, I, listen, if it's going to, if revival is going to uh, come, if revival is going to help, hey amen, it's going to break out. You're going to have to have his presence. Secondly, hey amen, listen, the people have to have the right attitude. In verse number 2, it says, And straightway many gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Some of us are going to have, you want revival? You're going to have to have the right attitude. See, the Bible says in verse number 1, it was noise. You know what this preacher's trying to do? I went and, hey, thank God for the, the, all the banners are up but one. And I need somebody to volunteer. See, I used to didn't have, hey, I need somebody to volunteer. Amen, thank you. Amen, uh, to, to put that up. And I thank you for volunteering. See, that's what we're doing. We're trying to noise abroad. And here's another thing. See, they announced it. They wasn't ashamed of it. They noised it. It was noised abroad. They weren't ashamed that Jesus was a meeting at the sanctuary that day. They weren't ashamed that Jesus was in the house that day. They noised it abroad. Now let me ask you a question. Here's what the Holy Ghost told me. Why don't some of you share the revival on Facebook? I know why some of you don't. You're ashamed of it. You're ashamed of your friends to know that you're posting something spiritual. Well, if you're ashamed, you need to get right with God. And if you can't post something about your church on your Facebook page, amen, you might that Facebook page is doing you more harm than good. Why don't you post it? Why don't you share it? Some of you, amen, don't even have the audacity to share your own church's revival because you're ashamed that you've got friends or you've been talking about your church so bad. <laughs> or you've been talking about your church or the membership so bad, amen, you're, you're afraid to post it because you've downed it. And you think we don't need revival? Amen. 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 
amen, amen. And some of you get on there, amen, and slap other people in the face. All in the name of Facebook. You ain't got guts enough to come to anybody and say what you want to say. You coward. <laughs> Boy, I, you, can, you can bless anybody out. <laughs> you can bless them out, buddy. I read a post this week and I thought, well, who are they slapping now? That's, who I, that's what I thought. I wrote a post and I thought, who am I? And I know what some of you are thinking. Was it mine? <laughs> if you thought that, it probably was. Are you with me? Sure, I know what I'm talking about. Hey, man, some of you get yourself in trouble because you Facebook too much. I don't want nobody know when I go to the bathroom. <laughs> Amen. Some of you are modest. Some of you, amen, say too much, and then, and then you gripe because somebody blesses you out for what you posted. And then it fires you all up. Keep your mouth shut and keep your thumbs shut. Amen. Boy, that didn't cost nothing else. Extra, hallelujah. But why won't you? The Bible says they noised, it was noised abroad. They wasn't ashamed. Hey, you know what you ought to do? You ought to, you ought to eat Facebook up with this announcement of revival. Unless you're ashamed. If you're ashamed, then I pray God to get you on the altar this morning. Amen. Amen. And, and, and not just that. Hey, by the way, that's one of the greatest outreaches that they are amongst your family and your friends. Because right. some of them go on your Facebook and just see what you're doing. Right. If your news feed doesn't pop up when you do post something, hey, if they know you, they'll, they'll put your name in just to see what's going on. It was noise, amen, to tell somebody. Listen, how many of us has even told anybody that we're having revival? That's the reason I print these up. Are you with me? That's the reason I print them up. I mean, they, how many, how many, well, glory to God. I want to encourage you. How many flyers will be distributed this week from your hand? From your hand. To your family, to your, the person you work with, the people you work with, from your Facebook. Not only that, they attended it. They were there. The Bible says they gathered together. In verse number 2. I mean, what if revival goes on? What if we can start next Sunday morning? If God tarries, or well, God don't tarry, by the way. Somebody say amen there. Amen. God knows when he's coming. I've, I've, been, I, I've always said if God tarries, he's coming. God ain't tarrying his coming. He's coming. He knows when he's coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But listen, if God allows us to be here next Sunday, I'm his with me. I wonder Sunday morning, amen, all the way through Friday night, I wonder if heaven starts falling. Amen. And God says, go Saturday. How many is going to be there? Amen. And heaven falls again on Sunday. Amen. And he says, go on Monday. I wonder how many is going to be. Well, preacher, you're going to kill us. Yeah, with that attitude, you ain't going to get nothing. Amen. And by the way, if it's, if it's real, it ain't going to kill you. And if it's real, hey, glory to God, your spirit will overcome that tiredness. Amen, amen, preacher. They attended it, amen. Hey, let nothing hinder you, amen, the week of revival. Set your mind you're not going to miss one service. Now, some of you got the mentality. <laughs> some of you could be here on the morning service, but you just won't. You, you won't because it's sacrifice. You ain't watching as the stomach turns. Does that still come on? The young and the restless. You still watch them old soap operas. The guiding light. We can tell how old I am. How many is with me? 
You ain't, you won't sacrifice. I mean, you know it's morning. You say, preacher, but, and the devil's already got you convinced. You ain't going to come. You ain't going to come. Let me say this. What if Jesus was coming back tonight? What if Jesus said, I'm going to be there at 6.15 tonight. I'm coming back. Would you stay home? Or would you find yourself, now I could go at home. But if I knew he was coming back, hey man, you know where I'd be? Tonight's church night, 6 o'clock. Would you be here if you knew Jesus was coming? Well, he's going to show up tonight. Let me believe that. How many believe Jesus is going to show up tonight? I believe that. I believe he will. Now, I ain't predicting the coming of the Lord. But he's going to show up tonight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I got some one time. I said, come tonight. Somebody's coming that wants to see you. <laughs> Hallelujah. They didn't know rightly what I was talking about. Oh, God, people say it. Oh, by the way, when you invite somebody to the house of the Lord, make sure you're here when they come visit. Right. Hallelujah. Church ought to be the number one priority in your life. Your attendance to God's house, amen, should be so fervent. Now, I need you to listen to this. Your attendance to God's house ought to be so fervent that if you missed, your pastor would know that there was something bad wrong. thing of it is when some of you miss I don't have the perception something's bad wrong <laughs> you know why because they ain't nothing bad wrong somebody help me it gets hard don't it you feel I'm beating you over the head truth will set you free I'll say this, amen, I'll say it again. It, it, it ought to be that the pastor would think, man, there's something bad happened. There's something bad, amen, what went wrong, amen, because they're not here. Those that will show up is going to have revival. Those, amen, uh, amen, are making God a priority. No matter what, they'll get it. Not only here, if you want revival, listen, they had an appetite. They showed up. They got together. They went where Jesus was, and man, they had an appetite. When I say that, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. They're, let me tell you something. They ain't no the Joy Heirs from Harriman, Tennessee, and the Parsons family from Goshen, Indiana, going to be with us all week. Amen. But they ain't got it. I don't care how good they can sing, but they ain't got it. But singing has a good place. And it has an important place, amen, before the revival. The only thing Jesus offered, amen, to, amen in that house that night, the only thing he offered them was preaching. Amen. Did you hear me? The only thing he offered them was preaching. No pumping, no priming, no pizza, amen, no hamburger, no pot roast, no taco bar, no spaghetti, no barbecue. Somebody say amen. amen. All that sounds good during that week, amen. But I'm going to tell you something. Listen, we only need preaching. We're, doing the fe we're, we're feeding the folks, amen, to say that we love them and appreciate them coming to our camp meeting. And it get, makes them a little bit, amen, they, they, well, hallelujah. The focal point of this church is not the choir loft. The focal point of this church is not the steeple. The focal point of this church is not the best of you. Are you with me? It's not the fellowship center. It's not the youth center. Amen. You know what the focal point, amen, of this church is? This pulpit. That's the focal point, amen, of this church. If revival ever comes, if it ever comes, hey, breaks out, it's going to come from this pulpit. Amen. The presence of the Lord was there. The people's attitude was right. 
Four feet preaching was the main thing of the service. And oh, by the way, you can read verse 2 again if you want to, but they preached and not teached. There's a difference between teaching and preaching. Now, there is a topical preaching. There is an expository preaching. I do most of my preaching because God leads me this way, and it's mostly topical. That's the way God led me. And that don't mean I can't preach expository. Expository goes more on the teaching end of it. How many is with the pre preacher? Amen. But there's a difference between teaching and preaching. Teaching is knowledge that deals with your intellect. I'm going to let that sink in. Teaching is knowledge. Let me say it slower. Teaching is knowledge that deals with your intellect. Preaching is unction that speaks to your heart. Hallelujah. Some of you got it, some of you didn't. Old time spiritual scriptural preaching is what Jesus used. And listen, and it caused the people to tear the roof off the house to get into where Jesus was. Under the Lord, how would it not be good if it got so packed that they, hey, they couldn't get in by the door they wanted to see what was happening in the house that they'd tear, start tearing this roof off this church. He said, preacher, then you'd have a fit. No, I wouldn't either. Because, hey, if you tear it off, God will put it back on. Amen. You say, preacher, I don't think you're getting it this morning. That, now, I'm telling you, that was excitement and the presence and power of God. Amen. Amen. Preaching will get the job done. It, preaching brings conviction. Verses 3 through 5, fifthly, the sick of the palsy was healed. The Bible says in verse 3, is born of four. He had his four brothers are carrying one corner of that bed, or that cot, whatever it was. The Bible calls it a bed, amen? I picture it as some kind of cot type thing, amen? They were carrying him. Carried him in the bed. Listen, listen, you know what I see? I see compassion. I see determination. I see faith. I see love. I see mercy on the unfortunate because you know why? The presence of the Lord was in the church. People's attitudes were right because preaching was the main thing. They knew if they could get him, amen, there, that they could get him what he needed. They knew it. You know what you need to do? You need to beg your family and beg your family to get to the house of God. And quit worrying about what happens when, it, when they get here. Well, my, my, my people don't worship like y'all. Well, surely you ain't ashamed of the way we worship. Yeah. Amen. Get them here. And listen, get them under the preaching of the Word of God. Show them love. Show them compassion. Oh, by the way, some reason, amen, some, the reason your family don't come anyway, and people around you don't come anyway, you ain't got the compassion that you need to have around. You ain't got the love you need to have around them. Somebody help the preacher. Be determined. And then they confronted him. In verse number 4, they uncovered the roof. You know what happened? They broke it up. They went down from the roof. You know what they done? Them, them that was bearing him exposed him in front of everybody. Exposed him in front of everybody. In verse number 5, what did the Bible say? And when Jesus saw their faith. Did you get it? When Jesus saw the lame that had to pause his faith, that ain't what he said. 
Now I believe he, I believe glory to God he had the faith. And I believe he was part of part of there, T A G I R. But the Bible says when he saw their faith, he them four that was burning that bed, burn that cop, mind you, Amen. Bed. Hey, what did he do when he saw their faith? Do you know? How many got somebody got a loved one you'd like to see saved? What if the Lord would save them because they saw your faith? Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. But I will say this, amen. When he saw their faith, it takes faith on the person of the, that, that is born again. All God's people say it. Amen. amen. I think what I'm saying, don't go run off and say I said anything different. When the Bible says when they saw their faith, what, did, what happened? He said, son... Glory to God. He said unto the sick of the palsy, Some of thy sins be forgiven thee. Only when he saw those that were bearing him's faith. Wow. How many would like to see your family saved? You know what you need to do? You need to bear them to the house of the Lord in this revival. Preacher, I ain't going to pick them up. I ain't telling you to put them on a cot or put them on a bed and carry them. I'm telling you, amen, by, you, you get them here by the word of your mouth and the prayer of your heart. Hallelujah. Beg them. Amen. Beg them. Preacher, I can't talk to my family. Hey, you better start talking to your family. Amen. Why? Jesus is coming. Amen. Right. And they could go out into eternity. Beg them. Four minutes out of twelve. Bar with me just a minute. They confronted him. Now I'm gonna tell you something else. Jesus cured him. Jesus healed him. You know what we need? We need a burden for people that no one cares about. We need burden for people that nobody cares about. Thank you for being in the Lord's house this morning. Amen. Thank you. Everybody's walking up this street. Amen. Everybody, amen. Hey, thank you for being in the Lord's house. But we need people, amen, that nobody, hey, we need people that no one cares about. We ought to care about, amen, them enough to get them to the house of God. Amen. That's the reason that bus ministry is important. And oh, by the way, if you can stop it, push, just stop it, amen, and stop visiting and start going out and knocking on those doors, amen, just because you've got your feelings hurt, shame on you. Shame on you. And just because it didn't go your way, shame on you. Shame on you. Some of you are, some of you are scared to death to say amen, ain't you? That's all right. I said it. Amen. Why? Why do you say it? You're beating us up, preacher. No, I ain't beating you up. I'm just saying you let the, I hate to watch the devil treat you like, and I hate to see you let the devil treat you like he's doing. And by the way, it ain't all your way either. It ain't all the preacher's way either. But he didn't call you to be the pastor of this church. He called me to be the pastor. Amen. And it ain't all the deacon's way. Amen. There's things God speaks to me about He ain't going to speak to you about. Amen. Amen. Preacher, you won't have nobody come for revival now for sure. <laughs> you ain't heard the message. Amen. Revival don't lay in my lap. Amen. It don't lay in nobody else's lap. Don't lay in the deacon's lap. I'm just trying to pray. And by the way, if I get up here and preach hard and I tell you the truth, it don't mean I hate you. It don't mean, amen, that I'm trying to hurt you. Oh, I've had people, amen, to think, to say, man, hey, you got me today, preacher. I didn't get you. The Holy Ghost got you. Amen. It's either amen or oh me. And I, there's been times I've had to say, oh me. But I didn't get, I didn't get mad at the mailman. Hey, when he brings a bill that I don't like, I don't, I don't find him and shoot him. Amen. Amen. I don't put a bomb in my bell box and it blow up and he opens the door. Amen. Amen. You got to love him. But why? He's just delivering the mail. 
Jesus cared this man. We need, I'll say it again, we need a burden for people that no one cares about. We ought to care about them. Jesus can save anybody. Can I get a witness? Amen. He can save anybody. Amen. There ain't nobody too hard. There ain't nobody, amen, been too far, went too, had done too much. We need to tell them, amen, to, and get them to the house of God. Amen. Get the sick here. But now there are some things that can hinder a, a revival. But there, verse 6, But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. And wondering, hey man, why does he speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? They started murmuring, didn't they? I'm going to tell you something, being critical... Being critical, sitting there. <laughs> well, she can't carry a tune in the buggy. I can't feel a thing. Well, I don't believe I'll go on Friday night. Scott Campbell's a preacher. You know why some of you don't like Scott Campbell? Because he'll set your fields on fire. <laughs> and that's reason you don't like him. And that's reason some of you probably won't be here unless you get right with God. And by the way, if grocery night's Thursday night, you ought to make it Saturday night. And if revival goes on, you ought to make it next week sometime. Amen. You think I'm kidding? Being critical. People don't, some people don't want revival. I don't like, hey, those preachers, why that, uh, oh, let's get one here. Why that David Edwards, I won't be there on Wednesday night. I don't care much for him. He, he hurt my feelings. I ain't going to hear Wesley Campbell preach. Why, he, he can't preach worth nothing. That Ray Stockton, I don't care about him. That Justin Grigg, well, I might as well. Wow, Patrick O'Dell, Richard Co Well, I might as well just stay home that way. Critical. Amen. And you don't want to criticize everything in the church. It's a funny thing to me. You can do all the criticizing. <laughs> you can do all the criticizing. Enough said. Enough said. Verses 15 through 17. There was care, they were careless about sin. Listen, he said, Jesus said, well, let's read it. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meeting in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with the publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repent. And they criticized him. They were careless about sin. Jesus is trying to forgive sinners or give sinners the gospel. Amen. And more or less, amen, they got a little upset. Listen, we need people who care about the lost. Where'd that young man go sitting in the service while I go? Is he in the bathroom? Y'all thank God he came in. Oh, God, people say it. Amen. Savannah, come to the piano, would you? I like for us to stand our feet, every head bowed, every eye closed. You know what the devil will do? He'll do anything to keep the meeting, this meeting, from being powerful. He'll do anything he can do to keep this meeting from stirring your heart. He'll do everything he can do to keep you out of the house of God on every service. I said it didn't belong in my lap. It don't lay in the deacons. 
the preachers, the singing, or singers. This revival is your responsibility. So if it's a success, depends on how much you put in it, how much you pray. I'm asking for 24 hours of solid prayer for this meeting. I'm asking you to fast whenever God tells you to miss a meal or to fast. And I know what's on some of you's heart. Well, I don't know about going and all COVID's up, COVID's up, COVID's up, COVID's up. All right, that's okay, and I understand. There's a lot of people to be here. Then if you're that scared, why are you masked? Amen. But then, then don't then go go don't go out here to Walmart and rub elbows with everybody. Don't go to Ingles and rub elbows with everybody. And let me just tell you this: if I get COVID from Camp Mean, I've got enough time, I've got enough faith in God. He'll he'll get me through COVID. And if he don't get me through COVID, guess what? I'll say goodbye here and hello there. And you just meet me there, and I don't want it. Somebody say Amen. I don't want it. I ain't asking God to give it to me. But I think, amen, during, during this pandemic, amen, we failed God by not trusting God. I didn't get a big as amen. I followed with Darby. That's all right. It ain't for me, amen. It's for you. Amen. She's playing. Hallelujah, I'm the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hi. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody come pray this young man. Hallelujah. Revive us, Lord. Send me revival. Put a stirring in my heart, Lord. Oh, God, move, I pray.
Sometimes the way is long and hard. And sometimes I don't feel like traveling on. Sometimes I'm pierced by Satan's darts. And sometimes I just want to go home. But